Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the McConnor Man at YouTube with a, another model video. Today, looking at the Tamiya 135 Type 10 main battle tank from the Japan Self Defense Force, also appearing in the anime Girls and Panzer first episode, where it's airdropped and crushes a F 40 Ferrari at the school. This kit was donated to me by Metro Hobbies, formerly Victoria. Hobby Center. The boxing is a promotional type issue to hobby shops and distributors to promote the kit, which at the time, seven to eight years ago, was very new. The instructions was also photocopied onto standard A4 paper, not giving me a traditional glossy book. However, as clear and easy it is to read with Japanese text, the runners were pla packed in plastic with some sort of final tracks and multimedia material, plastic meshing and poly caps. The kit is divided among six runners in a couple of hundred parts, the main hull to all the small pieces, divided up with lack of scene lines and detailed components and contours that do not suggest model assembly such as traditional seam lines, sinks and other imperfections including molding defects of pin marks or flash. For the ease of color separation, polycaps are utilized in the wheels for adding and removal in the efforts of painting. The barrel would be the biggest issue where a seam line does have to be filled. Everything is plastic cemented, glued and slots together quite finely and easily. Easy to follow the instructions, very very rich in fun experience kit all of your typical standards that you would expect from a Tamiya kit especially one made in modern times I do have to make an apology to Metro Hobbies I was an up-and-coming youtuber building a few kits very full of myself and uh, confident in my experience they gave me this uh, to put on the channel uh, promote them where they've recently changed ownership and to support what I was doing. I built the majority of it with a great amount of ease and trouble until I got to the rear baskets with the multimedia part of cutting neatly and gluing together. Uh, this disparaged me and I put it away until I was ready to tackle it at a later date. Uh, coming with the pandemic M2020, I dust this off to finally finish it and with the knowledge of Girls and Panzer, go absolutely all out. So this kit is definitely for you. You'll notice in the montage and film in putting this kit together, it was stored in its prototype box with a bunch of junk inside in the state that I finished and utilized my skills and photos all the way back then and luckily it didn't get damaged or any parts went missing. This kit is very true in proportions and the reference material to the original armor back then and the detail is quite fine yet versatile in not breaking. I finished the last of the optical sensors, equipment and machine gun, deciding not to utilize the 135th figures to stick to the more universe of the anime. I have not built a 35th scale tank since my teenage years in the late 90s, early 2000s and wanted to do justification in soft edge camouflage and a proper accurate scheme. I did ample amounts of research and I drew out the actual camouflage lines on the instructions and narrowed down the colors via searches on Google's and comparing it with paint stock I currently had which funnily enough is very similar to late Imperial Japan war tank paints which came in a Mr. Color set and added lighter and darker lacquer colors to give shadow and accent as it's such a wide flat body of a kit. I would very gently pick out the lines I wish to paint with black paint and the airbrush, fill them in, shade it and then do the alternating colour. Back in the day I would have hand painted it or done a blue tack mask and rattle can or a base colour in with an airbrush. I'm very glad that I put this away until I had enough skill for shading and weathering on a much larger surface as rich as this. 
Yes, I do get scared of kits or frustrated and put it aside. In my typical style and standard, a lot of gradient shading has occurred with the three tone colours for each camouflage piece, obviously, and plenty of liquid black, heavily thinned, and picking out small fine details, raised bits, corners, underneath the hull, under the wheel realms, and anywhere a shadow will cast on this complex and interesting looking hull and turret combination. Bit of hand painting, lots of uh, masking of the mud guards that were painted with an off black, and windows painted with silver and a clear blue. Indicator and work lights also receiving the candy clear treatment in other colours. For really tiny details, not clear in the instructions, reference material found on Google and Pinterest images were essential in getting small spots of colour just right, such as the bag underneath the machine gun ammunition holder. The little idler wheels were hand painted tyre black, though the main wheels were face on airbrushed without gradienting anything in the dip of the wheel realm itself. Though wanting to keep it as clean as tidy as humanly possible, very little weathering has occurred as this is a showpiece for training parades, that sort of thing. State of the art tank, not tested in battle or anything and it's very vibrant and clean in the actual animation itself. Uh, arm armaments, uh, stowage were painted, the machine guns were hit with gunmetal grey and other bits and pieces. The instructions are very clear and easy going on what exactly needs to be coloured. The vast hull itself received a sludge wash picking up all of that detail and the really nice decals were applied in the training scheme for one of the artillery or tankery schools as suitable to the character from the show as well. At multiple stages I've worked on this kit over the years a lot of thought has gone into assembly and painting combination. A lot of sub-assembly has occurred where parts and detail were glued together as much as possible leaving large parts such as the lower upper hull separatable and the turret for ease of holding and painting without flipping the model multiple times. This has made it very easy to paint and visualize in pieces and handle, though once assembly has occurred, applying PVA glue and clamping it together worked a treat due to how well Tamir kits interconnect and almost dry snap fit with just a little influence needing it to keep it together permanently. This all occurred after a few dull coats of Gaia Notes Flat Clear and Premium Flat Clear were applied to give a very drab tone. Tragically, showing this model around to friends and general social media, no one knew what the Type 10 exactly was, confusing it with a Russian Cold War tank or something from Imperial Japan or China. Downloading the F40 Ferrari basic model off Thingiverse and printing it on my Ender 5 Plus, I was able to scale it to 35th, slice the model in half and distort it heavily with a butane torch, putty and styrene to make the wreckage look as similar as possible to the frame rates of the show. This was shaded heavily and a few details hand painted with a sludge wash and a few dull coats to show the battered and crushed cut. The usual Z-line access treatments did occur of applying a few coats of filler primer and sanding before the final primer stage. It's a bit distorted but very happy as it's just a final small detail at the end of the tank. This was not quite enough to represent the show, so one final look, I replicated the car park from my own interpretation in a drawing, cutting it up in Fusion 360 and 3D printing it on the Ender 5 again, showcasing the whole car park, a bit of a hill which is liberty of my own to be seen around the tank, and the drain guards and parking guidelines that traditional cars would park. The tank would sit here after being airdropped and face the girls who are practicing their tankery course and greet the teacher. Here we are today, seven, eight years later, what was meant to be a very quick build and a thank you to a hobby shop that I frequented and wanted to share on social media, turned into a whole fiasco that challenged my 
competency and comfort as a scale modeler and then followed by not quite being enough in portraying the message that I exactly wanted. As a standalone kit, the Type 10 from Tamir is a fantastic build, highly recommended, went together easily, the plastic is soft, the detail is sharp, this was a total treat to paint but to show off what I wanted as a big fan of the Anime Girls and Panzer by itself clearly not enough especially since I painted it in a more photo realistic toned fashion than a cartoony bright cutesy color this is all brought together with the tree the flock the painting up the base the texture and finally the most memeable piece a crushed F40 Ferrari at the back of the tank tracks which was just a lot of fun to print treat and paint parallel to finally finishing off this tank sure I have made a couple of mistakes here and there got frustrated and might have rushed one or two small details though it is completely done the only frustrating bit was the basket at the back of getting all that flush and ready as it doesn't react to plastic cement and super glue was required that initially led me to abandon the model however my efforts in finishing this especially the painting and my favorite part the basing I'm very pleased and more than happy to actually enter this in a hobby show or put it on public display as a tank by itself uh, on showcase it's nothing actually that interesting due to the lack of uh, weathering and its uh, basic shaded tone I don't think it would really stand out on its own as a merit though it is nice enough concerning detail I've bought all of the protagonist 135th kits of special box art as well as those of each of the commanders from the show they will be built over time and the years. Thank you very much for watching. As always, until next time, stay tuned for further content. In the description section down below is all of your usual links and resources. However, I included a link to Thingiverse for this base. You can download, redesign, and use it for however you see fit. Check out my social medias for updates and other activities that I'm up to. And we'll catch you guys next time. Thank you very much for watching and your support.